I only do videos on this channel that I am excited to make. And this video covers a topic I have always been fascinated with, risk taking. And the concepts introduced in this video borrow heavily from the writings and teachings of Nassim Taleb. Recently, Taleb has become a bit of a lightning rod because he turbo blocks people on Twitter that disagree with him. But nevertheless, there is a lot to learn from his thoughts on risk. Risk is so important, in my opinion, because it touches every aspect of our lives. How we manage risk in our investments will determine if we have enough to retire comfortably or if we will struggle financially our entire lives, which leads to a miserable existence. But to understand risk, we need to understand math, specifically probability theory. Yet probability is often misunderstood. At a glance, probability is simply the likelihood that something will happen. If you flip a fair coin, the probability it lands on heads is 50%. But real life and investing is far more complicated than flipping a coin. And in real life, if you don't want to go broke, we must understand two different types of probability. Ensemble probability and time probability. Nassim Taleb illustrates the difference perfectly using a hypothetical casino as an example. In the first example, 100 people go to our hypothetical casino to gamble with $100 each. We observe that some make money, some lose money, and out of the 100 people, one person goes bust and loses it all. Based on this sample, we can reasonably calculate that the probability of going bust is 1%. This first example is known as ensemble probability. Now let's consider a second example, where someone named Skip goes to the same casino 100 days in a row. On day 34, he goes bust. After all, he does have a 1% chance of going bust, so if he goes to the casino 100 days in a row, it is bound to happen. In this second example, there is no day 35 for our friend Skip because he went bust on day 34. The second example with our friend Skip is known as time probability. As we can see, Skip actually has a 100% chance of going bust, despite the fact that only 1% of people will go bust on average. The important point here is this. The probability of success or failure based on a collection of people does not apply to you as an individual. So when you sit down with a financial advisor or you watch a financial guru on YouTube, you are often presented with investment returns based on the market's historical average with comments like, the S&P 500 has historically returned 10.43% or similar such thoughts. And you might believe that going forward, you can expect a return of around 10%. But this type of thinking represents ensemble probability. But as an individual, you are subject to time probability, like our friend Skip from the casino. As an individual, there are many events that can take place in your life that would force you to sell your investment positions. What if you have a health issue, a divorce, or some type of similar personal catastrophe? If something bad does happen in your life, you are more likely to liquidate your investment position when the market drops. And selling when the market drops will ruin your returns, obviously. In this type of scenario, the average historical returns of the market are completely meaningless. I hope this whole discussion at this point isn't sounding too theoretical because this entire topic is not theoretical at all. This is the reality you are living in as an individual. The average historical returns of the market do not apply to you. Full stop. You are like our friend Skip in the casino and the chances of you going bust losing all of your money are always approaching 100% as time goes by. So, what do you do as an individual investor? Nassim Taleb, for his part, recommends a barbell strategy for investing. 
As you can see, this barbell has much more weight on one end as compared to the other. In this strategy, the larger weight on the left represents about 85% of your net worth, which you would keep in safe investments like short-term U.S. Treasuries with maturities less than three months. Effectively, you are keeping 85% of your net worth in cash. Then, on the other end of the barbell, where the small weight is, sits about 15% of your net worth. With this 15%, you invest in high-risk, high-reward investments, such as out-of-the-money call and put options, venture capital, or highly speculative biotech stocks. The barbell can also be written like this. With this strategy, 85% of your net worth is basically 100% safe. Then, with the 15%, you take big speculative risks. Now, anything could happen with that 15%. But here is an example of how it could work out. With the speculative part of your portfolio, say you pick 10 biotech stocks, each getting a 1.5% allocation. Then, after three years, eight of the investments go to zero. One doubles, and one increases 20-fold, which can actually happen with biotechs. In this scenario, you'd be sitting on an 18% gain for your total portfolio, while keeping 85% of your net worth 100% safe. Of course, you don't have to invest in biotechs. If you are sophisticated enough, you can use out-of-the-money call and put options, or you can invest privately in a local business, like a restaurant. The point is this, you want to keep the majority of your net worth safe. Listen, I'm not endorsing the barbell strategy here. I am simply explaining what it is. And I do find it to be incredibly robust. I believe if you keep this barbell strategy in mind, and then you go right now and watch my video on Morgan Housel and his book, The Psychology of Money, you will increase your odds of financial success.